The CoinSuries channel is pleased to have you back. Request from viewer is, what do you think will happen next? You can also comment your opinion. Thank you to all the subscribers of our CoinSuries. Who came to our channel CoinSuries? You will always be info with the latest CoinSuries news. Option 1, will there be a settlement of XRP and XRP? Option 2, or XRP will win. Option 3, or SEC will win. Please like my video and subscribe my channel. I don't think anyone is surprised anymore that the Bitcoin price is finally falling sharply, just as predicted. Listen up, we hit nearly $49,000. In the months that followed, we fell below $40,000. Surely the most crucial aspect to grasp here? Whenever the ETF controversy escalated to new heights on social media, I maintained that precise position. The primary objective, as I indicated before, is to accumulate steady cash. Finally, it's easy to see why a lot of people think this decline is just the beginning. That it will plummet, and maybe plummet much more in the next day. Some ancient coins still have a little greenish tint to them, however, it's visible on many others, their hearts break. Keep in mind that XRP XRP really did not go through a massive sell-off. Similar to most coins. Our current sitting position is similar to that of the 19th, when we were at approximately 53 cents. Although it's absurd to consider, a huge sell-off in XRP is still within the realm of possibility. We need to be watchful and cognizant of this. But since Bitcoin's market share is still relatively low at approximately 50%, a significant decline in Bitcoin's value, perhaps even below $40,000, to the mid to low dash $30,000 range, is not out of the question. Just as I said in my last video, we're taking a look at this post in the Remain XP thread. Bitcoin appears to be the topic of everyone's mind right now. According to past trends, the 20% drop in Bitcoin value since the golden refusal is just the beginning. From 2016 to 2024, we may observe a total of 618 rejections with percentages of 29.25%, 30.4%, and 20% when we look at the bigger picture. We are currently at around 20%. About $35,000 would be the point if Bitcoin's price decreases 30%. The crucial level to watch is the low to mid range on 30,000, as I indicated earlier. There will be a significant sell off in the market if that happens, and all coins will take a further hit. Therefore, we should pay close attention to that level, while simultaneously keeping an eye on the source of the sell push. Some examples of this are Grayscale's heavy Bitcoin sales due to the fact that it's Grayscale. Look at it from a new perspective. Everyone should exercise caution as it appears that Whale Wire intends to dump even more Bitcoin, Justin Grayscale transmitted more than $900 million worth to the Coinbase exchange. As I previously said, Whale Wire is generally an extremely bearish account. Taking into consideration the sales pressure and the falls in XRP, two Bitcoin ETFs, BlackRock and Fidelity, have matched for top place after six days of trading at 95,000 to Bitcoin. How much longer do you think the selling pressure on Grayscale Bitcoin will last? The sell-offs have been absorbed by other Bitcoin ETF issuers, most notably BlackRock. Almost $4 billion worth of Bitcoin is held by exchange-traded funds ETFs. One positive aspect is the abundance of Bitcoin ETF flows. In contrast, Grayscale at negative 2,806, which represents a considerable sell-off, is visible at the bottom. The fact that they're still promoting their spot is intriguing. Forex, based on Bitcoin. Many see this as an effort to sow chaos in the market through manipulation. Irrelevant, that is the point. Hey, we knew the Bitcoin ETF will be sold off eventually anyhow, and the smart money knew the same thing, so Bitcoin's price wouldn't skyrocket to $100,000 or whatever because of the scam around the Bitcoin ETF. But I do think this is a correction on the way to new highs in the short term. As a result, I am not concerned about it right now. I am intent on reaching the end goal, which is, of course, that the next cycle is already underway. On top of that, when XRP prices fall depends on a few things. Among key. 
The Grayscale coin sales driver saw a decline from 621,000 Bitcoin to little about 580,000 in the first three months of 2024. With 38,000 BTC potentially released by the third quarter of Celsius, 2024 might see the release of Bitcoin since the ETF launch, Andra, and the remaining 20,000 BTC. FTX is also bankrupt with about 20,500 BTC, and miners are planning to sell the 32,000 BTC they've been holding on to for the second halving in 2024. Also, the US government seized 194,000 Bitcoin from criminals. Ignore the possibility that the first, second, or third quarters will see a massive sell-off. Nevertheless, we need to keep these details in mind. A word of warning, it is recommended that 10% to 15% of your stable currency assets be kept as a reserve. Many users still keep 10 to 15% of their coins in stablecoin holdings, even if the market has been relatively positive for a while. Yes, completely, your coin exposure is stable so no one should denigrate you. Pay attention. In a word, this is crucial. Nobody is buying the dip anymore. That gets you bankrupt in the end. You should have a consistent supply of coins in a separate account so that you can buy the drop when you reach crucial levels. Instead of averaging in, many people just purchase negative candles. Oops, I need to replenish my supply because there was a 5% drop. It's ridiculous. It is not wise to put money into something that is falling in value over time. Given this, I was hoping to get your take on the merits of recommending that everyone save 10% to 15% of their cryptocurrency holdings for use in taking advantage of large-scale buying opportunities. To me, it's just another oak win in this market adding up. Our US Government Accountability Office shares my belief that steady coin accumulation is crucial. They have been exceedingly gloomy at the same time as the grayscale sell-off. January 16th is the date here. Digital assets like cryptocurrencies can get over U.S. economic sanctions, which are meant to deter foreign groups from doing anything that hurts U.S. interests. Before I last checked, physically transporting U.S. dollars around the world was completely painless. Quantifiable worth, sanctions are insufficient to stop it entirely. The unrestricted flow of fiat currency is unaffected by the imposition of sanctions. This is only brought up, though, because on the 21st, Elizabeth Warren made reference to it. According to the latest USGAO report, rogue regimes that manage to avoid sanctions are using cryptocurrencies as a weapon to undermine our country's security. At long last, cryptocurrency must adhere to anti-money laundering laws. I have a measure that can make it happen. My goodness. Elizabeth Warren, you have a measure that would criminalize cryptocurrency completely. Sure, I get it. Their intention is to discourage you from being a Bitcoin owner or trader. The United States is still facing this problem. I have said it before, the US does not control world events. However, it is amusing how these individuals persist in trash talking, despite being silenced by others in the profession. As an example, in the cryptocurrency community, many are wondering when these hypocrites will hold their banker pals Jamie Dimon and JP Morgan accountable. In the meantime, a judge has given JP Morgan and the Epstein explosion victims their $290 million payout. Listen up, JP Morgan was hit with a $200 million punishment towards the year's conclusion for enabling its employees to use WhatsApp as a way to avoid regulators. However, listen up, you won't believe this next part. Zero Hedge's comedic value lies in the fact that he ceases to mention the massive laundering of Bitcoin and US currency that has taken place since 2017. This 20,000 is compared to the 33. So, when we look at this case in detail, okay? They are making up a story to make us believe that we are about to miss out on a great opportunity to buy more altcoins cheap before the next big spike. However, ironically, I was considering Crypto One Tony Edward when I came back to this article. Just recently, JP Morgan was fined $18 million. The 21st of January has gone by. We're pressuring customers to remain silent regarding bank. Bank's wicked act. No legal document, including but not limited to settlement agreements and employment contracts, 
gives you the authority to prohibit individuals from disclosing misconduct to the SEC. This is the quote in question. However, we maintained for a long time that JP Morgan coerced some customers into taking credits or settlements from the company or going to the SEC to report suspected breaches of securities law. Sure, I'll gladly zoom in on this. $14 million. With $18 million, this bank is the largest in the world due to their decision to keep important information from the SEC their gaze devoid of emotion. What is the point of even bringing this up? We must go back to October 29, 2023, for this simple reason. A sum of $770 million has been requested by Ripple from the SEC. Are you able to identify the problem? Cryptocurrency holders face severe consequences. Big banks that aren't into cryptocurrency, you guessed it, a couple million dollars is the absolute worst that can happen to you, so don't be afraid. Businesses involved in the Bitcoin market ought to be subject to far less regulation than major financial institutions. Verifying that these bankers and major organizations face consequences for their actions is crucial for building trust. The effect of spending $18 million is negligible. Additionally, libraries. A library was leveled by their hands. Putting that out of account. A large number of extra participants have also been added. Here comes Coinbase. Kraken Finances. You know, it's really annoying. At last, the opinions of Meta Lawmen are presented here. At the hearings about Coinbase and Binance, since these are two notable cases. However, Nance agreed to pay what would have been the biggest fine ever, approximately $4.3 billion. I believe it was in the past. In extolling the benefits of the instructions it had offered on the investigation of whether crypto tokens constitute securities, the SEC neglected to recognize Bill Hinman's contribution to the sufficiently decentralized test. It was also handled as if it had never happened. Nonetheless, you can get Paul Gruel from this place. This is the chief legal officer of Coinbase, in case you were curious. And it's far worse than that. They acted as though the question was really asking to look at this when asked directly about Mr. Hinman. I mean, this is completely ridiculous. The essence of it? In my opinion, that is correct. Ah, I get it. Which is a good thing. Mr. Heyman is the only one who has stated that a former employee of yours made that assertion. No, loans and tokens are not securities. I'm sorry. Give me the rundown on why these assets are securities. What a party buyer receives is determined by our core ecosystem, which I discussed before. As a result, there was 100% certainty. No answer is provided for the question. Bill is never mentioned in casual conversation in any other way. This is just hilarious right now, isn't it? In the hypothetical situation from the IEF game, they are protecting people like Bill and are trying to keep the tarp from flying off. It appears that we have been mulling over this for a considerable amount of time, and our curiosity regarding the overall perspective and the veracity remains unchanged. I think it's crucial that everyone keeps an eye on this scenario because the SEC is currently on a warpath, especially with the Coinbase issue that I highlighted before. If the SEC wins, they will control the exchanges to the letter, which will drastically reduce market liquidity. Without it, predicting what you might buy and sell will be a huge challenge, and it is the fundamental essence of this market. Keep in mind, though, that neither the SEC nor Gary Gensler can influence the result. Across international borders, this sector is poised for further expansion. Technology will always triumph, so bear that in mind. My number one piece of advice for anyone buying or holding Bitcoin in the United States is to cold surge it and take it extremely seriously at all times. In other words, you need to have your VPNs, cold storage, and the like set up. Listen, I'm warning you, you could be the target. Many of these issues with Coinbase Binance need our attention, in my opinion, and not only in that regard, leaving aside the plethora of other exchanges currently being pursued by the SEC. I still can't believe they're letting this go on, but it's all for the greater good. Furthermore, bankers and influential individuals, like Elizabeth Warren, continue to use regulators as pawns. There seems to be a lot of money circulating behind the scenes, 
and I believe it is this money that is driving these shifts. A great deal of corruption appears to exist, at least to my eyes. Many manipulations have taken place as a result of the present market turmoil. Keep your seatbelts on, since the market is very volatile, additional unfavorable market activity may occur later this week and into February. Remember that February has not been kind to cryptocurrency. It is imperative that we keep in mind that we need to keep our focus on it. You shouldn't, again, sell all you own in the blink of an eye because you assume prices will drop. Despite a precipitous decline in the fear and greed index, many people still don't understand the broader context of the present market position. It brings me joy to see it because it proves, once again, that we are getting close. With that being said, I sincerely hope you found this video entertaining. I would be really grateful if you could join my free Discord server, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to my notifications if you enjoyed this free content. Furthermore, there is a 63% discount available for NordVPN through the link in the description and the comments section, so it's definitely worth checking out. It is unrivaled at $399 per month. The fact that they accept cryptocurrencies or a two-year plan is a plus. The price is $101. This is obviously decided by the taxing nation. Today, it was all over. The channel would be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe and like it. Catch you later, farewell.